AI in Action is brought to you by Aulis International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Our host brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success, and their advice. Focusing on fast-tracking you to the top, AI in Action cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. To listen to the latest AI in Action podcast, head over to www.aldis.com forward slash podcast, or subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. I'm James Baker and I'm hosting today's episode of the AI in Action podcast. I'm very happy to be speaking to Satya Hristev. On one hand, Satya is the head of data science for Exactag, the technology leader in digital marketing space. On the other hand, Satya sits on the German advisory board for ICON. ICON is a global sector association, helping its members to achieve competitive advantage in smart data marketing. We'll be talking about data science and AI in the world of media and marketing, a little about what's going on in Germany specifically, and some exciting advancements in data science in the digital marketing space. So Satir, it sounds like you've got a lot on your plate at the moment, so thanks very much for taking the time to speak to us. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm uh, happy to speak with you. First of all, let's let's start with Xactag, because there's two, there's two different moving parts to what you do. So Xactag is a technology leader in digital marketing. So what exactly does that mean? So Xactag um, is a marketing provider. Um, and uh, it, it was founded in 2011. We are um, 70 colleagues um, across our offices in Düsseldorf, in, in Hamburg, and of course here in Frankfurt, where we sit today. We're an innovation leader um, in the field of marketing attribution as um, the field of marketing uh, decision-making that uh, provides insights on effectiveness and efficiency of marketing budgets. Um, so our clients are more than 90 corporations um, working globally uh, and they use our software to, to optimize their marketing spendings. And with our technology we collect data uh, along the entire customer journey from its very beginning to the, to the purchase um, and when marketers start planning their, their next campaign, um, they use our tool to, to evaluate the performance of their past activities. Um, on the one hand and on the other hand, they build um, predictions on how the impact of their activities will be on the market in terms of sales. Okay, so so you you see a lot of different things working with multiple clients across different industry sectors. You must have a really good overview of what's going on in the data science world. What are the the trends that you see in data science in the marketing media field? Basically, marketing has always been an interesting field for for data science, and when you look through the use cases that provide quite a lot of insights uh, on the tension field between companies and, uh, and their customers and their interactions. In between, we have technologies that yeah, kind of platforms that uh, can be used to, uh, to gain insights or connect companies to their, to their clients. So in the past um, couple of years, um, what I've seen is that data science in our field is more, has come more to down to earth, let's say, in a way that uh, in the beginning, um, everybody was uh, quite excited about data science um, and, and everybody was hoping to find out one algorithm uh, that explains everything in a black box manner, yeah. which basically can't exist, right? Um, so, so a lot of um, companies and a lot of competitors in that field that were offering uh, solutions like that, they disappeared from the market, more or less. Um, I think this is one of the challenges, isn't it? Isn't it? Because there's, there's been so much hype around data science. And, and actually cutting through what what is data science, what's actually adding value to a client, is, is quite difficult to, to find out. Well, I think with, with every new topic and 
maybe uh, five, six, seven, eight years ago, it was quite a new topic. And uh, when you have a new topic, you have a lot of excitement around that. So companies start to manage themselves in a very, I would even say, um, Darwinistic way. Uh, that they try to adapt and there is something new and you always try to adapt so you start producing a lot of things that uh, that doesn't really add business value um, and, and that was quite a problem in the beginning but that's coming down uh, more down to earth okay what's the what's the actual business outcome of what data science provides what's the what's the outcome of the solution that you have there and, and what's the outcome for, for the entire business and not just like spotlighted uh, one business case mm -hmm. here, one business case sure. here. So where are you seeing data science have the biggest impact in marketing for companies? Well, what we see um, is that it uh, shapes investment decisions at the end of the day. That, that's what we do here basically every day at Exactech. Um, when we look through our system, we optimize billions of euros uh, every year. Um, and uh, just by gaining insights, uh, it's not done. So it starts with um, giving also advisory, actively advisory, yeah. uh, what should be done, uh, how, how to shift marketing budgets. And, and that's where you gain a lot of efficiency. Uh, you gain a lot of efficiency also when you talk to your clients in the right way, so when the right client gets the, the right message. That's where efficiency comes from now. For, for the future, I think there will be a lot of efficiency around uh, how creation is done, automating processes basically in, a, in a creative within the creative process. So how would that look? We have in the meantime systems that lead every human uh, in, in very, very complex tasks, um, like playing games is maybe one of the uh, examples that everyone gives, but if there is a machine that can beat a human in, in playing complex games, I don't think that um, in the future, it would be a problem to have a machine that uh, beats uh, a human in decision taking when it comes yeah. to shifting budgets. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I, I saw a video uh, yesterday, and it was um, it was in China, and they they had a load of uh, surgeons versus an algorithm trying to diagnose. Uh, I think it was I think it was a tumor. And the algorithm could do it in three minutes with an 84% success rate. The group of scientists, it took them 20 minutes on average with a 60% or 64% success rate. So the difference was massive. So when you, when it can do that, you're right. <laughs> it's got a huge impact in the decision making. Let's move on to ICOM because I think this is, this is a really interesting body. How did you get involved? And what's the goal of the organization? Um, so, so basically ICOM is a, a, a sector organization and it brings um, all around the globe smart data marketing experts um, and they get together to, to leverage the value from, from data for, for businesses and how businesses use that and uh, shape the transformation of businesses in a way that um, that they're working towards uh, a consensus uh, on, on best practices and how to support businesses in their uh, transformation process. Okay. Wow, so it, it's an international organization, so you must have a, a, and also through your, through your job here and your previous jobs, you've had a real view of what's going on internationally in data science. Where does Germany fit in? Where does Germany sit? Yeah, I always say Germany is kind of the sleeping beauty uh, of data science. So <laughs> we have a lot of uh, people here that uh, want to do data science. Um, but on the other hand, uh, we are not good at promoting what we do or, or we don't promote that in the way other countries promote that. Yeah. 
it's much more okay we engineered something that is working much faster it doesn't have that wow effect uh, other countries uh, have. Yeah. So you look at countries like the US or the UK where there's a lot of talk about what's going on and everyone hears about it, but there's some really good stuff going on in Germany that just isn't marketed. Yeah, it's uh, more, let's say we are fixed on uh, how to solve a problem and we're quite excited to solve that problem. Uh, but we are not very excited in talking about uh, yeah. <laughs> the problem itself. It's more about, okay, let's find an efficient solution. I mean, Germany is the country of efficiency. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's what it's all about here. Uh, without that big excitement and, and all the celebrations around it. So for me, that's something that, that should change because in order for data science to progress in a country like Germany, you need to be able to attract the right people and attract people not just from within Germany, but from abroad as well, to come and you know, work on new techniques, work on new products. What, what do you think about that? I definitely agree with that. We, need, we definitely need more people. I think we have great talents in Germany. We don't uh, nurture them in, in the right way. When you think of how many people um, come out of universities, there's still not enough um, that want to do data science. Um, and they hit reality by starting their, their job. Um, they don't know what's going on there. Uh, and, and they have expectations of uh, how data science uh, should look like. But on the other hand, they, they struggle with reality. Um, and that's why you have so much disappointed uh, data science starters. Um, what, are the, what are the big differences between expectations and reality, do you see? Well, um, I think people expect that um, when they start doing data science, uh, they go there and create the algorithm that solves the problem of the universe. Some of them definitely uh, have the potential and, and might get to the algorithm solving all problems, uh, I don't say they wouldn't, but there is a basis uh, of, of knowledge and basis uh, experience that you need to do the job. Yeah. Um, and that hits them quite hard, I think. Yeah, I can imagine that. And that's why we see a lot of people in the data science world after six months in a job already looking to move because maybe the expectations of what they are going to be doing and the reality of what they need to be doing in order to progress are slightly different. Well, I think um, a lot of data science teams are, aren't, uh, aren't set up in a very proper way. Mm. So, so we have on the one hand uh, dysfunctionalities uh, within, the, within the companies, definitely. That's something that uh, business should, should work harder to uh, to get over it. Um, I mean, we have still a lot of data science, um, they, they call it projects. I, I wouldn't say data science is a project, uh, data science is something that the company wants to do or they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but when, when teams like that are set up like uh, a lighthouse project, that's, uh, that's what they call it uh, at the end of the day, that's our light tower. And the, the business logic behind it is, is very easy. Um, so everybody thinks that there is that digitalization tornado that yeah. comes from somewhere uh, and, and is going to affect business. That's definitely happening. But to be honest, when, when a tornado is coming, you can't see very uh, in a very wide distance. So, um, you won't even be able to see your great lighthouse. Uh, what you need is uh, basically something like a radar. You need a sonar that, that gives you guidance. So, yeah, integrating those teams would be much better for the teams and the, for, for, for the organizations. Um, that's where a lot of Mm, a lot of problems, let's yeah. say, come from. But you have a lot of experience in this. You, you were running and you built one of the largest data science teams in, the, in a media agency in Germany. 
So what were the learns there? What, how did you manage to do that? Well, it requires in the beginning a lot of, uh, a lot of workshops, a lot of, uh, a lot of talking and promotion of uh, what you do, how you do it. It's not helping when, when you start at too early uh, because uh, you just build expectations. Mm -hmm. But it takes quite a time to have a solution, to have a decent solution and say, uh, and, and start promoting that solution uh, among the others. And that's um, something I think uh, is quite important. You, you need time to uh, first fix something and then say, here is the solution. Yeah. Um, what a lot of people do is uh, uh, starting it the other way around, um, I don't think that's a good approach. Uh, when you go somewhere and start talking what it could be, and a data science project takes sometimes a year, it takes sometimes one and a half years yeah. to finish. And that's and a big investment, isn't it, for a company? For the yeah. company. And then building those expectations. And, and when you talk one and a half years, we might be ready by then, and then, and then. That also has a, an impact. Yeah, sure. So, so basically, there is a simple decision whether you do data science or not. Um, and and if your question is, can you do this fast? The answer is no. The, just don't go to data science, and it, it doesn't help arguing. So there are a lot of analytical teams and analytical skills, and I mean all those business intelligence teams and not, not only business and research teams in companies are something very established and they are really specialized to, to answer very fast research questions. But if you have a research question and go to a data science team, it takes a lot of time to build a data science application around every research question. Yeah. And, and that's where, where the struggle comes from. Um, the, the questions are addressed on, in the wrong way. Yeah. So what advice would you have for a, for a junior data scientist you know, starting off in the commercial world? I would say um, they, they can also start um, preparing for, for the commercial world uh, during their studies. There are a lot of opportunities out there. Um, Maybe one of the best opportunity uh, is given by the by the ICOM with their university outreach program, um, where students can can participate the hackathons, um, and on those hackathons they're confronted with uh, real business problems that companies face, um, and and they work hard towards getting a solution. Um, but it's great fun um, and, and they learn a lot in a very short time period and, and that's where you get real uh, real value. So it's, it's real world problem solving. It's definitely real world problem solving. Um, I was uh, having the great honor to be in the jury uh, last year um, within the Lufthansa challenge um, and it was great working with those teams um, and they worked really hard um, but learned a lot. Yeah, how, how was the setup of a hackathon at the Lufthansa Challenge? So basically the, the hackathon um, is uh, 24 hours like uh, every hackathon. So the, the uh, competitors are, you have a lot of teams there, um, you have maybe 30, 40 teams from all around the world uh, coming together 24 hours uh, facing um, real, real uh, business challenge mm -hmm. um, and they, they get all the data sets provided and within 24 hours they should uh, uh, be finished with their models and, and um, it's quite a tough challenge because not only uh, the model fed or how the model works um, is getting weighted, but you have also quite significant weight going on business value. 
uh, and how this model actually helps business. And that, that I feel is a gap between you know, people who are focused on research and people who are focused on getting a product to market and into production. Absolutely, absolutely. And you should, that setup is uh, quite unique that um, you're facing real business problems and you have equally basically uh, evaluation of business value and um, you can go to courses uh, and, and learn that, uh, but how to provide the business value is uh, really hard. Okay, so you've been listening to the AI in Action podcast with Sotia Haristev from Exactac. We've talked about data science in the marketing world, data science in Germany, what Germany needs to do, and how to build you know, a great functioning data science team. Thank you, Sotia. Thank you for your time as well. AI in Action is brought to you by Aulus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Aulus offer an exec search program. Aulus can help you discover how data science and AI can transform your company. With our unrivaled network of C-suite executives and senior AI professionals, we offer retained search services across the US and Europe. For more information, contact mark at aldus.com. Get the Aldus advantage. Become a member of the Aldus community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston, and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to all us members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week, we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career, and more. Become an Aldus member and get the Aldus advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldus.com. That's www.aldus.com. Aldus International, empowering through AI.